Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, today, we are going to talk about the standing up Kubernetes on OpenStack is cool. Then, what it need? I'm Ethan from VMware, and I'm a co-reviewer of Heat project and Selling project. Hello, uh, everyone. I come from ZTE and worked for uh, uh, ZTE Corporation. And I'm also a core of Selling project. Okay, in this topic, uh, Shifeng will give a quick background introduction and then we will go through the solution and details. Okay, let's start. Okay, let's start. As we know, Kubernetes is good at packing and developing um, containers, but Kubernetes is not designed to solve all the problems. Uh, <clears throat> some many features uh, rise on the um, provider uh, cloud providers, uh, such as uh, node allocation, automatic automation, network, and uh, storage. Uh, uh, many projects in the OpenStack want to uh, uh, integrate with the Kubernetes, uh, but uh, however, the, uh, many of them uh, also do uh, only do the deployment, uh, but for the day two, there is a still a go on working. Uh, uh, in this session, we will give a solution about uh, deploy and operating a Kubernetes cluster um, uh, with uh, using Selenium project. Uh, uh, we can see uh, two commands here. Uh, the first commands we will give uh, a Kubernetes master cluster, and the second we will give, give you a Kubernetes worker cluster. <clears throat> and selling, after you using uh, these two commands to deploy the uh, Kubernetes cluster, then Selling can uh, have uh, uh, can use his uh, extensive framework to do uh, um, some policies and uh, uh, using his receiver to uh, receive the, to do load balance, auto healing, and auto balance. Okay. And uh, this is the, uh, uh, this is the day two operations by Selene. Uh, as, uh, uh, as we know, uh, Selene can, uh, ha has uh, integrated with load uh, RBAS, ADOH and many other um, policies such as uh, scrolling policy, load balance policy, and health policy. Uh, we can uh, from uh, we can uh, receive the messages from Zaka or the webhook, and we can do scrolling out or receiver or uh, uh, unsupported shares. Many other actions. Okay. Now I will give you more details of how we use Selene to manage and operate the Kubernetes cluster. I'm not sure if uh, any of you heard of Selene or have used of Selene. No? Oh, okay, okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you have to know that uh, Selene is a resource pool management tool that it can create a cluster and manage this cluster with its uh, abilities. So I will give you more details on it. So uh, in order to use Selene to um, manage the Kubernetes, the first step is to stand up the Kubernetes. So I create two new profiles in Selene to stand up the Kubernetes. One is for the Kubernetes master, and one is for the Kubernetes node. And I use the Kubernetes master profile to create a, a master cluster. And I need to input the flavor and the image name, here I use the Ubuntu 16.04 and use, uh, I need to input the SSH key and also the public network. And then Selene will do the rest. Selene will create the private network, create the router and allocate the floating IP to the master node. And also Selene will run a user script in the virtual machine and this script will download the Kubernetes and use Kubernetes to initialize the Kubernetes master cluster. And also uh, 
it will store some necessary information into the data of the cluster, like the private network ID and the IP of the master node, and also the token of the Kubernetes atom. And then I use the Kubernetes node profile to create a node cluster, and I need to input the master cluster name or ID. So uh, it will use the same private network and use the same uh, Kubernetes token to join the Kubernetes cluster automatically. So you see that uh, standing up Kubernetes cluster is easy, but what about day two? How do we manage and uh, operate the Kubernetes cluster? How do we scale in or scale out the Kubernetes cluster? So to solve this, uh, I use the receivers in Sunlink. So in Sunlink, each receiver for the uh, cluster actually is both uh, cluster operations, like uh, for example, the scale out operation or the scale in operation. <coughs> so when the receiver receives a signal here, and it will trigger Sunlink to do the cluster operation. For example, the scale out operation, then Sunlink will uh, create the new node and join the cluster automatically. So in Sunlink, we support two types of receiver. First type is the webhook receiver. If I create a webhook receiver for a specific cluster, I will get a webhook link. So if I send out a post request to this webhook link, uh, then it will trigger Sunlink to do the specific uh, cluster action, for example, scale out. And also, I can create a message receiver. Uh, if I create a message receiver, uh, Sunlink will listen on the message queue service like Zaka, and then wait for the signal message from Zaka, and then trigger the action. So that's how Sunlink receiver works. And also I can carry some uh, you know, parameters in the request body. For example, uh, how many nodes do you want to scale in or scale out for this uh, for the specific class uh, operation? And uh, for the Kubernetes cluster, I use the hipster to collect the matrix of the uh, nodes in the cluster. Uh, it can collect the CPU usage or the memory usage and then use an alarm system to send out the alarm to the Sunlink receiver. Or we can leverage the Selimeter to collect the virtual machine matrix and then use A to create an alarm based on those metrics and send out the alarm notification to the uh, Sunlink receiver. That's uh, how I use Sunlink receiver for the Kubernetes cluster or the scaling. And besides the receivers, we can attach many policies to a cluster. For example, if I want to do the auto healing, I can attach a health policy to this cluster. And the health policy supports three types of failure detection. First is the node status pooling. It will check the status of nodes in the cluster every period of time. And then if any of node in this cluster is not active, it will try to trigger the, the recovery action. The recovery action here can be rebuild, restart, or recreate. And also it can listen on the uh, virtual machine lifecycle events. So when you power off a virtual machine or terminate a virtual machine, NOVA can send out those notification events to the message queue, and Sunlink will listen on the message queue for those specific events, and then trigger the recovery action. And also we can leverage the load balancing service to monitor the status of the nodes. So that's the health policy in Sunlink. And also uh, we can attach a deletion policy to a cluster. Actually, the deletion, deletion policy uh, defines some rules, and it tells Sunlink how to do the scale in. For example, it can tell Sunlink to delete the newest nodes in the cluster when we do the scale in, or, or delete the oldest nodes, or delete the unhealthy nodes first. So that's the deletion policy. And also, I can attach a load balancing policy to a cluster. If I attach a load balancing class, uh, policy to the cluster, Sunlink will talk with the load balancing service to create the virtual IP and put all the nodes into one load balancing pool, and then load balancing service will balance the network traffic 
to each node in the cluster. And there are some other policies you can check on the document of Sunlink uh, if you are interested. So that's how I use Sunlink to manage and operate the Kubernetes cluster. So uh, we still have some future work that we need to finish. The first is to notify the Kubernetes uh, when we do the cluster scale in. We need to notify Kubernetes to drain nodes and then delete nodes before we actually delete the virtual machine. So we need a notification mechanism in uh, Sunlink between uh, Kubernetes. And we need to support the role-based cluster in Sunlink. Uh, if we support the role-based cluster, I can merge the two Kubernetes profiles into one. So it will make it, make, uh, make it more simple and easier to create a, a Kubernetes cluster. And uh, I also want to leverage the cluster autoscaler in, in the Kubernetes. The cluster autoscaler in Kubernetes actually interact with the Google platform to do the uh, scale in and scale out automatically. But it doesn't support uh, OpenStack. So it would be good that it directly send out a signal to, our, to the Sunlink receiver. And also we need to integrate more OpenStack uh, services like Kua, Cinder, Swift, Manila, something like that. And also, uh, since I'm using the uh, Kuba Atom, for now, Kuba Atom doesn't support the high availability of the master node. Mm -hmm. uh, it said it will support it in the next release, so we need to wait for it and do it in the future. So that's, uh, that's the work we've done. Um, if you are interested in it, um, or if you are trying to use it, or if you are trying to contribute it, it would be very great. Um, if you have any questions, or if you want to see the demo video, um, you can reach us later, we can show you. So, so that's all we are going to talk about in 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you.